Welcome to Working Class Music. We are doing our first interview with one of my best friends and best buds ever, and it's with Michael Bond. You may recognize him from bands such as The Villa, Wild Heart, Issues, and Woe Is Me. So he's he's been around. Please do this because uh, we're going to be talking about a couple different things, COVID, to mental health, to music, to Star Wars. So I guess, Mike, just give, give Yo, us some... I'm excited, man. Yeah, I'm thank excited. Thank you for too. having me, man. Yeah, thank you for doing this. Cause of course, I, of course. We, we've been, like, we've been tossing around the idea of doing, like, interviews. The thing with them is, it's just like, how do you do them and not like, well, yeah, you know, this and this and this. And it's just yeah. like, knowing you, you'd be the perfect person person to do this because you know i know what your history is and i know what you've been through over the past year i was like man let's talk about that so without further ado gonna kind of jump in the deep end somewhat and okay want you to tell us how you've been handling yourself during covid like how's that affected you how's that affected music for you with covid um at first you know like when it first happened um myself just like everybody else like was rushing like to the grocery store and like it, it was just this huge thing like w- just this huge like unknown thing mm-hmm. they're like w- what is this you know we don't know like or is, is is there gonna be some crazy apocalyptic thing happening <laughs> you know like they just like they just like built this up and they're like they just weren't giving anybody answers so like I, I you know i remember going to the grocery store and like being like being like oh we got to get like couple weeks worth of food like, like, <laughs> like it's gonna be crazy we did and then and then you know we just it just kind of like it kind of died down a little bit you know it was it's, it's always been a serious thing but i just remember when the first initial announcement and everything happened and i i just remember being so shocked and then you know you cut to now and it's like it's like it's still a very serious thing it's still a very big thing but it's 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 weird being in a in, in like a state that uh not not to trash my state or anything like that but like it's weird being in a state that just like it's just wide open yeah it's just wide open yeah we here in georgia don't give a fuck or most people yeah. in georgia don't give a fuck as far so, as the so, pandemic so, goes. so like it's it's weird and then i recently went to chicago and it's definitely taken a lot more seriously there you know and um and and just coming back to georgia and it's just seeing like 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 a free-for-all it's weird it's uh it's it's definitely it's, a serious thing and something that should be taken seriously i mean you you even had it yourself yeah. you know like so like we need to just deal with it and, and 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 get it out of the way so things can go back to normal but at the same time it's very weird because georgia almost is like why it's wide open so it's yeah. like it's almost like back to normal not that that's okay you know like like you, you know what i'm saying like, no, like it's, get, it's it's just weird because you go to other places and and even like la you like talk to friends out in la and they're like dude I barely have left my house in months, you know, I like just going to work straight back home, you know, and it's weird. I'm like, really? Like, I'm like people are going to the movie theaters here. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. You know, like not that that's okay. And not that that's like justifiable or anything, but like, it's just, it's just, it's just weird. Like, it's almost just like people ask me all the time, like friends from other States and I'm like, so, so how is it in Georgia? And I'm like, you can go wherever you want, yeah. you know. Like it's it's just crazy, and it, it's it sucks because like as a musician, I see that, and and as a musician, I I I just want it to be dealt with and just be done. And and, and as a musician, it's 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 definitely hard to like see people not taking it seriously. The kind of jump on that as far as COVID goes, two things. One, how do you feel seeing other artists? Uh, going out on tour it, during a fucking pandemic, like to be blunt, like because I know how I feel about it, and it kind of sucks. Um, not kind of, it does suck. Yeah, and you know, it's it's weird to see that people are doing that, and it's just like it's a slap in the face. Yeah, it's, really, it's, it's it's literally just like a slap in the face. Even with like, I won't go too deep into it, but like, even with like 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 uh, churches and like religions and like like even like Christian artists, like not bashing them, but like. Yo, I, I, like it's just it, to me, it's just like it's just a slap in the face seeing that you you're going around playing arenas right now, when when you're just using like religion as like you know something to like down. I don't know. I like downplay like COVID. It, it's just it's just frustrating like seeing people go out and, and and play all these shows and I'm sitting in my living room and and not just me, thousands and thousands of other yeah. artists and and not even just musicians, even like actors and anybody in the like entertainment industry like is is literally like chilling and like you're like, "Oh, 
freedom of religion. So I'm going to go out and, and, and play these shows and, and I'm going to play to thousands of people without a mask and like, I'll be fine. It's fine. You know, like, yeah, well, I'm glad you're only thinking of yourself. For me, it's just like watching that and it's infuriating, like to say the least, because, you know, one, it's like you're, you're a religious organization, like kind of jump on what you're saying. You're a religious organization. You're doing this and making money and then you're not paying taxes. But then you want then you want to take part of the care package. Like, yeah. you know, it's, it's and then it's, you go to go and like post it and like kind of not the maybe not deliberately but like you're kind of throwing it in other artists faces like like when you post like that like 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 chicago you guys were great tonight like or whatever city you're playing in like and you just see a video of them playing for like thousands of people and i'm like i'm like god i wish i could do that i wish yeah. i was just that ignorant i think you know? i think part of the thing too is like they're making money off of that like they're not helping the arts i think that's something no, for not me at all. it's just like you know you have a bunch of music venues closed down and like we don't know when they're gonna reopen um yeah you know and it's like there you have these you know people going out and just Hey, we're gonna do our thing despite a damn pandemic. Yeah, exactly. And it's 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 frustrating, and it's it's it just sucks, man. It's just it's hard to see. It's hard to watch. Yeah. And uh, I think like using religion as like a clutch to like go out and like play music, and, and it's just not cool. Yeah, it's, it's just, like you're it's gonna shit. take government money, and but you're gonna endanger thousands and of people. I think that's a great point with with what you said as well. The fact that uh, they're not like really giving back to the arts or like to the entertainment industry. Like like if you're gonna do that, if you're gonna sit here and collect money, like and and, and tour, like like there's no pandemic going on, and and see other artists suffering, like like you better give back. Like yeah. you better do something. Like like. I mean, you better, you know, follow your leader, Jesus, yeah. you know, because he would give back. But, yeah. you know, so, you know, it's just it's frustrating. One thing I want to want to touch on, too, is because uh, you and I were in the same boat as far as launching new music projects during a pandemic. Yeah. And that that is an interesting thing, because it's like you can't go out and tour. You can't really film a proper music video because, um, you know, you, you don't want so many people in the same room you know my question is like one tell everybody about the villa you guys need to listen to them because they are sick i'm not saying that because michael's my friend and he's doing this interview i'm saying that because they are sick and the new music is going to sound awesome but we're not going to talk about that just yet as far as like doing it in a pandemic it was weird it was weird uh we shot we have like one music video out right now and just even to make that happen was like it was cool but it was like it was it was kind of a pain but like we um we shot it like right after um covid had happened I'm gonna, what is this oh <laughs> sorry um, so we shot the uh the video uh right after like covid happened and we didn't want to have like too many people around and everything and so we shot it basically outside and we shot it in, in a room in my house and like for like a couple days prior to the video i pretty much just took this room in my house and just kind of like did all this crazy stuff on the walls and everything. And like, I don't know. I was just like, I'm going to try to make this look like a set as best as possible mm -hmm. without having to go out and like even get materials or anything. Like I literally just was like, I'm just going to make this room. Like, like we can like, we can get some angles, you know, like, yeah. like we can make it, we can make it look like a set or whatever. So I did. And then uh, the other half of the video is literally shot outside, which was cool. And like, it was, like I said, taking it back to where there were so many unknown things. There were so many like, like, yo, are we going to like, cause you know, they, they, they locked down everything for a short time time period and 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 we didn't even know if we were able to like be outside and stuff so there's one shot where i'm walking down the road and they have a they have a drone above me like shooting an overhead shot and a cop just comes right down the road and the drone's just hovering above this cop car <laughs> like, like and um so i was like oh god here we go like we're gonna probably get arrested or something like for being out in the middle of the road like like whatever but he just drove our, yep. right on by yeah, which Georgia. Was, well, yeah. so it was whatever but um so but yeah so we like we just didn't know what was gonna happen we didn't know like if we could even be like out there was just so many like unknown things and everything but like we got it done we get we did the best we could you know like and and it, and it turned out cool and um definitely to make that happen it was it wasn't easy but you know we we wanted to make it happen and, and, and be as safe as possible so yeah so well one thing too um because I, I it's i can't i, I wasn't going to touch on this but I, I felt like you know now going into the conversation especially of last summer like uh both of our bands released a split together for uh black lives matter yeah and you know for me it meant a lot 
because you know it 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 was more than just allyship because i wasn't the one who came up with the idea you know it was it was you guys and for me um as a person of color it it meant a lot so i guess what i'm going to ask is like how was that for you guys because you know obviously there's a skin color difference but <laughs> but where? Like, where? Oh, well, yeah. um, but like you know, I know a lot of bands nowadays are scared to take that stance because they fear how their fan base might react to a uh, political thing. But you guys didn't. And one thing um, that was crazy about that whole thing was was and it was it was tough. It was tough. It was and, and I think I might me and Turner definitely hit you up and asked mm-hmm. your opinion on a couple things because it was right when the the George Floyd stuff happened Mm -hmm. and so we were at that point we were unsigned so when 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 you're an unsigned band you go through um we didn't have any label or management or anything so to put our stuff on spotify you have to go through a like outside party like outside like distributor or whatever and then you set a date for that for it to come out and we had already shot the music video and we had already locked it in and we didn't have a label to go to and go hey cancel this like like, we don't want any attention on us Like, like we need to let it be for now like 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 we can push this back to a later date we just couldn't do that like because we didn't have the power to do that it was already locked in and so i was like shit what are we gonna do i don't i don't want to like draw any sort of like negativity or like think that people or i don't want people to think that like like we just don't give a shit you know i like um and because we did and it was it was just like the, the timing was just terrible like like you know so to like put it out and and um it, it, it was out of completely out of our hands and um so having said that we were like let's at least like do something to like give back let's do something to like let people know that like hey like like this isn't about us like like we're not trying to like get the attention on us like hey look at us like like we're, we weren't being like stupid you know like, like we're not being ignorant it was just out of our hands so like, like so that day, the date was already locked in and it was going to happen whether we even promoted it or not yeah. you know it was going to come out like so like having said that where i like, look let's let's come up with something and 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 I, I knew you guys had a had a song and stuff so um i think it was actually turner's idea if i'm not must not because yeah, I, I know turner was the court like the person who yeah, correlated. yeah so i i think it was turns out that so so he pretty much was like yo we should do a split with jason's band and everything and like donate all the pro- proceeds to black lives matter and i was like i think that's a fucking awesome idea i was like let's do it and um so we did and even even when our song turning point came out and our music video came out it was just such a weird time no, because we, cause I, I, we I, didn't we didn't want to we wanted to like hey look it's out but like at the same time like we're not gonna overdo it you yeah. know like we're not gonna like be posting about it every five seconds yeah oh i think that was the thing because i know you and i had a conversation about it like and i know i, I talked to turner about it and um i know there were a lot of bands that felt uncomfortable because it's taking attention away from what was going on at the moment and mm-hmm. it was very crucial that america as a whole see what was going on and have this discussion on mm-hmm. race because you know it's something that needed to be have and like you know there's there's things that i think a lot of people a lot of artists did to contribute to further that dialogue and you know that's awesome so you know for me like as you know as a friend like i'd never done anything like that like yeah. you know i'd, I'd never and like when Turner approached me about that idea, I was just like, holy shit. I was like, hell yeah, we can give back. And I think what people don't realize is like, no matter what level you are, you're on, because you've played stadiums, you've played with Lincoln Park. This thing affects you, like everything that's going on from COVID to to George Floyd affected you guys as well. I think one of the things that I wanted to talk about, like watching that going on, like what was some of your takeaways from it dude i i cried man like i cried like and it, it took me a couple of days to actually watch the video because like i was just like i don't want to see that man like like but you know i eventually got around to it and 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 it, and it makes you mad because like man people are just stupid man like yeah. it, it just sucks like to i don't know like people are just stupid like like because like how anybody could defend that and just i had to get off man like because like like reading some of the comments people were saying i'm just like man like how do you think like that yeah how do you think like that i just don't get it man and like like and even me like like dude i'll be honest like i was a little turd when i was a kid you know like, mm-hmm. i was a little ignorant shit and and like growing up growing up in like a small town in georgia i was in this like little bubble you know and and, and i always was like 
around the same people and everything. And it actually took me touring and getting out of that bubble of that little town in Georgia. It took me getting out of that bubble and like, not, not that me being in a little Christian small town Bible belt town, like is, is justifies anything, but like, like that's, that's the honest truth. You know, like, like, um, I was in this like huge, like Christian, like community and and like that's all i knew that's all, all all i was taught was just this one thing and that's all i believed and it took me experiencing other people and 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 touring the world and seeing other people to to break me out of that and and realize like look man like there's other people out there like not everybody thinks the way that you do actually i'm gonna throw a, a curve out of that just thought of what part do you think religion plays as far as like the racial divide and everything that kind of went on last summer i think it plays a huge part I think mean, it just plays a huge part. And it's just so weird. It's so weird to see. For me, I'll, I'll just speak on Christianity because that's what I grew up as. Um, but for Christianity, it's 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 frustrating because they can they can justify certain things, but other things you just let slide. And I'm just like, why? Why how or how do you let that slide? Like like it's just it's just weird seeing the things that they let slide and then the things that they're like hell bent on saying like well, well god said well god said you know like and justifying certain things but like other things that you, you let slide and it's kind of shocking that you would even like let that slide like even as uh i, I don't want to go into like some crazy super political stuff but like 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 um even with like with trump like so, oh, so okay. i'll just use this i'll just use this as an example this lady messaged me on instagram once and and it was because i posted something oh she said um god put trump into office and and he was a cho he was chosen by god to be in office and and he's a great leader and all this stuff and i was like so god so my response to her was god chose a guy that said grab women by the pussy i'm gonna put that guy into office and she goes well no well no i like like you know he does say some harsh things but yes god did put him in it and i was like i was like oh see that's what that's what i'm talking about like like and i'm like so you think god the ruler of everything in the entire universe goes, I think I want that guy as a president. <laughs> like, and looks at Trump and goes, I want that. I mean, be real people. Like, like, yeah. like how stupid are you? I was like, it's like, that's what you really believe. Like, yeah. come on. Like, no. and she just brushed that under the rug, like real quick. And then I just hit her back, which is like, you're, you're an idiot. Like, yeah. Well, <laughs> I guess uh, you can't even talk to people. Sorry, you're like, you can't even talk, have a discussion with people like that, though. Like, I mean, I, I think you're right, though, on that, because I mean, as um, people have seen on Facebook, like these political discussions, they tend to get very heated. One side is not open to the viewpoint of another. But I had this discussion uh, recently with a with um, another friend. And I think part of the reason, too, is because they can look at a situation like George Floyd and be like, well, you know, God made that happen, and they can use that as a justifier. But at the same time, it, you know, and and it sucks. It it really sucks because it's just like so. Not to get on this rabbit hole, but again, you can justify like all these years of slavery because God said it was okay, and all this shit that like people of color had to endure. And if that's the case, I don't I don't necessarily want to follow that God. Exactly. I don't want to follow. Hey. That's not a God that I want to be a part of. Like, like that's not a God that I want to follow. Yeah, like, like at all. That's the real. Like, 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 if he's gonna let all this stuff happen, then why the hell would I want to follow somebody like that? Like, and and that's like, the, and that's the thing, because it's just like for me, it, it's scary because that's their worldview, and it's like it's a game of Jenga. Like, if you pull one brick from it and it comes tumbling down, and they can't allow that to happen, so yeah. everything they have to justify, so. But enough, because yeah. this can be a whole podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, was, yeah it's just, I'm saying like you could, we could, we yeah. we go off. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, what I was gonna ask you about was um next thing was gonna be more so mental health. I know you've had Tourette's most of your life, mm -hmm. and how is it being a touring musician, like a professional musician, and dealing with that? Like, how do people approach you with that? Because I know with me, I honestly, I was just like, okay, that's Michael. Like, all right, it was yeah, just like yeah. one of those, like, all right, that's you. We're cool. He just twitches. Yeah, he just twitches like. <laughs> well, it was weird because like growing up, um, for until like high school, you know, you get made fun of. Like, it's not like an everyday thing. It's not like I was like kicked and like like beaten and shit for having <laughs> Tourette's and stuff. But like 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 you know, I was I was definitely called some names and like like you know called some like pretty harsh stuff and and or whatever. But like like and then and then all of a sudden I got to high school and this is this is no joke. All of a sudden I got to high school and then they put out a fucking south park episode 
and now Tourette's <laughs> is cool. Like, 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 I got to high school and they're like, oh, you got Tourette's? Tourette's? That's sick. sick. Like, 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 I was like, really? Because in middle school, y'all are calling me some crazy shit. Like, like yeah, y'all are t- calling me some terrible names. Like, all of a sudden you get to high school and like, they're like, yo, that's sick. Have you seen that South Park episode? And I'm like, yes, I've fucking seen it. Like, like, <laughs> like but like, it's weird because I got to high school and all of a sudden like, having Tourette's is cool and then you get, uh, people would try to get me to like, do stuff like like with substitute teachers. They would be like, "Yo, yo, yo! You should play it up. You should play it up." Like 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 <laughs> like, like substitute teachers just tell them like that I curse out loud and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like like I don't know. It was it was ridiculous. And all of a sudden, high school it, it was cool. Like like and then um from there on out like like I just from there on out I think that it took that like go hey, I can I can joke about this. Mm-hmm. You know I think it took that experience for me to go. You know what I don't have to like beat myself up about this. It's never going away. You know, like, it, I'm going to have it forever. So, like, I, it kind of, like, taught me to, like, yo, you can joke about it. Like, it's fine. Mm-hmm. Like, it's funny. Like, like, and just make it funny. That's how I've viewed it ever since. And, and, and you know, like, it's tough to see other people with it, you know, be so down and everything. But if somebody asked me about it, like, how do you deal with it? I'm like, I'm like yo, literally just, like, just laugh. That's all, you, that's, all, like, that's all you can do. Like, 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 I get sore sometimes. There's nights where I can't, like, sleep and stuff. And, like, like I'm, like, tossing and turning and I can't sleep. It's, it sucks. Like, I'll be, like, hurting. But, like, at the same time, it's, like, it is what it is. Like, like I just I just deal with it and, and, and just carry on. But, like, I just make jokes. You know, like, I used to have, like, different names for, like, the twitches and stuff. Like, this one was called, like, Open in the Jar. Like, like, <laughs> so, so I, like, you know, I, like, I just, like, I just, like, you know, like, make a joke out of it. You got to laugh, man. Like, yeah. like you got to have, you got to have comedy in your life you got to be funny like well i think that's one of the things that kind of like as far as a friendship goes like everyone that i know like in our circle that are like no one ever brings it up like no one and and that's to me that's super cool because it's just like not only um do you joke about it but seeing like someone like ashley like your sister joke about it and it's not that awkward like should we laugh should we be laughing at this yeah yeah. like Like, like, i don't care like laugh it up you know so you just gotta like make jokes about it and like like not take it so seriously like, like there's times where you're gonna be like i said like i'll be sore like you're gonna get down you know i like it's gonna suck like because it's weird because it's hard to explain because like you go through like phases like like i'll have certain t- they're called ticks or whatever mm-hmm. but like i'll have like certain ticks that i'll do and they um they they change like every so often mm-hmm. and 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 when i get a new one i'll get like sore like because i'm constantly moving say like my shoulder like mm-hmm. if you're constantly doing this all day like you're, by the end of the day, your shoulders just throbbing. Like and so like it sucks. It's it's, but you're gonna have those days, and you're gonna have days where you're like, oh, this is the worst. Like like I have this one where I like punch myself almost. Like it's weird. I'm not like, pff, like like <laughs> hard as fuck. But like you know like I'll like hit myself yeah. in the eye and like by the end of the day like like I'll have like a bruise and it's just so weird because it's so involuntary. Like it's mm. just not like I can't I, if I do I can't just like not do it. Like like I will literally my brain literally goes hey hit yourself in the face <laughs> so like this just sucks man but like it's it's you know like you just you just gotta be lighthearted about it you know like, like just laugh more yeah you know? you know the issues thing happened that like dude that was that was very very life-changing and and it, it was just weird and it was also a reality check too so um that was very weird